What's up guys? It's planche day today. Let's do some push-ups first. So today I guess I'm going to talk about performing actions out of love rather than fear. So I told you guys earlier, I had an earlier video that was titled fear of loss is important in any serious relationship. And I still believe it's important in any relationship because it reminds you to be grateful for what you have. But I think in some ways I was doing it out of fear rather than love. You see, I, I when I got divorced, I went back into the dating market and like <laughs> dating is hard, man. Like when you go through marriage, you, you, you get complacent and you get complacent with your looks, you get complacent with your sociability, you get, you just get complacent and you're, you're okay with just, you're, you're slowly regressing, I think, in marriage. Like you just stop trying. You know how, how couples stop trying when they get married? They're just like, oh, whatever, I already have, I'm already married, I, I, I don't need to try anymore, I don't need to work on my looks, I don't need to work on my sociability because I already have my significant other who I want to spend the rest of my life with. And that happened to me. I stopped working out, like I stopped being social, I stopped working on my social skills, and I just, I just stopped caring about, I guess you would say, the superficial things in life, like your outward appearance. You stop caring about what other people think. And, and you know, stopping, like not caring about what other people think is also important but you shouldn't you shouldn't go so far as to like like oh I'm, I'm just gonna like walk out naked in the streets or something when when of course if it's if it's like not a nudist colony or something because then it would be socially acceptable to be naked in the streets and naked in public but other than that like like you, you can't go all right pseudo planche push-ups let's go still in warm-up setup for today's planche session. So today I'm trying to get seven kilograms of <clears throat> seven kilograms of assistance and I'm using this luggage scale to measure it out. Now I always measure to the ball. It's not too accurate because there's some length that's that's still uh, that you still can't measure out due to this. But as long as you're making small increments of progress over time, it'll be totally fine. And then you can just wing it and figure it out as you go. So that's 8.7. So gotta lower it a little bit, decrease the assistance. 6.9. I stay at 6.9? Okay. Okay. So that's seven kilograms. All right, so where was I? Yeah, uh, so you can't, you still have to care about what other people think, right? You can't walk out naked uh, in the streets, obviously, but it's still important to, in this society at least, because objectively, in, in most people's perception, we have to kind of conform to these societal norms in order to function as a part of society as it is right now. All right, let's get started on the working sets. So that being said, in order to do well in today's society, you still have to work on yourself. You just can't let yourself go. Even if you're in a long-term marriage and you feel secure that you're gonna stay with your partner forever, you still have to work on yourself. You still have to keep improving. That's just how life is. It doesn't stop. I know some people don't like that. That's how that is, but it doesn't stop. You still have to keep working out. You still have to keep your sociability. That's just how it is. But you know what? Coming out of the divorce, 
Coming out of the marriage and getting divorced, I was thrust back into the dating pool. And what I realized is that things were significantly harder for me than they were before because I wasn't working on myself through those four years of marriage. I wasn't working on my body or social skills or anything. I stopped improving because I got complacent and I just felt too secure in my marriage. And so when I got divorced, I started reading up on all these books and topics about dating and relationships. And I realized like you, you do, you have to keep improving on yourself. But in some ways, it's still acting out of fear of a consequence rather than love. I'm not exactly sure how I want to explain where I'm coming from. Here we go. So, so I got pretty deep into red pill ideology, right? Because it actually helps. Red pill ideology actually helps. It helped me a ton with dating women and, and figuring out what women wanted rather than them telling you what they wanted, which most likely is, is most often, I feel like not the truth and it's not reality. So the red pill helped me a lot. Books like The Rational Male and No More Nis Mr. Nice Guy helped me a ton in improving my dating chances. And I believe I am where I am right now. Like I'm, I'm very, I feel confident in my looks. I feel confident in my dating abilities. And I believe I have the wonderful girlfriend that I have right now because of the red pill. But you know, thinking back on it, I'm trying to reevaluate and I'm reevaluating and I think it's coming from a place out of fear rather than love. So, so when I went through the mushroom, I told you guys that I went through the mushroom trip earlier this week, everything and the universe, like I melded together. Yeah, we all just kind of melded together. And I felt like I was the universe. The universe was love. Like every, there was just this oneness about everything. And then my girlfriend was with me during the trip. And I, I just kept saying like, how like, I don't know, just all this cheesy stuff. How, how, you know, I just wanted to be with her forever and everything like that. Just really, really cheesy stuff. Just, I, I guess, putting my feelings out there. Maybe feelings are temporary in the moment, but that's how I was feeling at the moment. And like after the trip, my my girlfriend and I, our relationship was was just so, so much, it, it feels a lot closer. I feel a lot closer to her. And I think I was, you know, I think I'm still working through the trauma of my failed marriage and the trauma of being with, with, uh, an abusive ex, emotionally, financially, and somewhat physically abusive ex. And I think that was stopping me from like really, really trying to invest deeply into another relationship. So, so there's, there's like blockages that happen. You know how people have past traumas? Like, like if somebody gets robbed while it's raining and they're walking uh, back to their car, like in the future, like when it starts to rain, that person will get kind of jittery and kind of anxious because he's like reliving, almost reliving that same event where he got robbed in the past. So abusive relationships can be the same way where I think people who've been in abusive relationships, the next relationship they go into, they get anxious about all sorts of things. And I think I was really, really anxious about all these other things where like, so, so the red pill, it's more about like dating multiple women or you can choose how you want to use it, but a lot of it is dating like multiple women and having relationships with multiple women. And like, they're just, just like stuff like that, like, like men's desires fulfilled, right? But you know, I think a lot of men, a lot of men, like I myself included, I still desire like to have sex with multiple women, right? 
But I mean, there's trade-offs with everything. Like it's either that or like you can form a deeper and more significant relationship with your significant other. All right, third set. So my trade-off, I knew I had the ability to sleep with multiple women because I was kind of already, I was getting to that point where it was, it was dating, like I was gaining enough experience where dating was starting to get kind of easy for me. And I think like that's always possible as long as you put in the effort to do so where you can have these relationships with multiple women at the same time. But I think there's a sacrifice to everything. If you do that, I think you lose the ability to really, really, really deepen and have a singular focus on one relationship and deepen your bond with your significant other. On the other hand, if you do try to deepen your bond with your significant other, you may sacrifice having that experience with multiple women, which is like every man's desire, right? There are special cases, but typically, when you have a very deep relationship with one woman, typically <laughs> it doesn't happen where you can have, you can still have multiple relationships with uh, a significant number of women. But yeah, the, the red pill was like, I think most men seek out the red pill out of fear of consequences of like, oh, if this doesn't happen, like if I don't do this, if I don't improve myself, like I'm probably going to be alone in the future. Like I'm not gonna find a girlfriend, not gonna be able to have sex. But after my trip, like, it just felt good. It felt good to just surrender, I guess, into my current relationship. Like, okay, fine, let's, let's, like, I don't know, I made up my mind subconsciously or un unconsciously that like, okay, let's, let's just, you know, focus on my singular relationship for now with my girlfriend instead of like, you know, I'm still improving myself. Like I, I know I'm smart enough, like, because I already learned from my past mistake of being complacent in marriage. So I'm still constantly improving myself. And you always, you always have to constantly improve yourself in a serious relationship, no matter what. But I know in, the, in a past video, I said, I made my ex-wife feel too secure in the relationship, but people are different. And my current girlfriend is, her personality is different than my ex-wife. So just because you make one person very secure and they take advantage of the fact that you're, you're, you're making them way too secure does not mean that if you make another person secure, that they're gonna take advantage of you. But still be careful. Maybe I'm still out of my mind when I'm talking about this. Cause I'm still, I'm still under the effects of psilocybin a bit. But yeah, after the trip happened, I just feel at this moment, a much deeper relationship with my girlfriend. And you know, the fear is still there that like she might take advantage of me if I make her too secure. But you know, since I've had experience and since I know and I'm since I'm constantly improving on myself either way, even even if we break up, there's this thought that like things are still going to be OK. Like I've been through divorce before. Things are going to be OK no matter what, whether you stay together or break up, you're going to be OK as long as you're improving on yourself. It's gonna hurt, but it's temporary. And everything is temporary. It reminds me of the saying, this too shall pass. If something bad is happening in your life, this too shall pass and there's going to be greener pastures ahead. At the same time, if something good is happening in your life, and even if you don't want it to end, this too shall pass. So you need to be extremely grateful for when good things happen in your life. And at the moment, I feel extremely grateful. I feel extremely lucky at the position that I am in life right now. And you know, it, it, it may pass in the future, but as long as I'm enjoying the moment and as long as I'm just being, everything's gonna be okay no matter what. 
So going back to the red pill, I feel like many men, like once they're too deep into it, their relationships are formed, like the, the framework of their relationships with women are formed more out of fear than love. Like they, they're just constantly like talking or they're constantly trying to, maybe, maybe they're constantly trying to work out for, in order to appeal Like if, if I were operating from a framework of trying to appeal to other uh, people, then I would probably be working out at a gym, like working out on, on the big five lifts, like the, the bench press, the overhead press, the squat deadlift, and the row. But right now, I'm really, really enjoying what I'm doing right now. Like I'm enjoying this and I think it's good enough. I think my body is, you can, you can have a great body with calisthenics only. And you definitely can't get as big as a bodybuilder, I think with calisthenics, but it's just what I love to do. It's fun. Like I get to save time traveling to the gym. I can, I'm just, I'm talking to you guys while I'm working out, whereas if I had to go to a gym to work out, like this wouldn't be happening right now. This conversation between me and the camera <laughs> wouldn't be happening. <laughs> I get to talk to myself while I work out and not seem like a crazy person, right? <sighs> but yeah, so I'm doing this out of love for myself. And you know, we all have phases. If you're operating out of fear at one point, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Fear propels us forward. Fear, fear allows us to move forward and seek out what might be a better option for you yourself in the future. But eventually, I think staying in that mindset of fear is probably not a good thing for you. Probably not. And I think mentally, I'm doing really well right now. And I'm, I'm slowly escaping that fear mindset and shifting more into a loving mindset. All right. But anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.